From the 1920s, Benito Mussolini was the dictator of fascist Italy. He aligned himself with Adolf Hitler and Nazi Germany to form the Axis powers. The Axis powers fought in the Second World War against the Allies and were defeated. Hitler eventually committed suicide in his bunker the end of April 1945. Mussolini would eventually be killed. But did you know that Mussolini actually fell from power in 1943? How that all happened you will learn in this video. I want to talk about how Mussolini lost his position in 1943. Keep watching. Good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, I'm Stefan, I'm a Dutch history teacher and I like to cover history for you. And if you find it interesting, well, consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. After the First World War, there was much unrest in Italy. There were many war dead, great scarcity and social upheaval. In this context, Benito Mussolini founded the Fasci Italiani di Combattimento. Out of this movement arose in 1921 a party, the National Fascist Party, the PNF, with Mussolini as Il Luce the supreme leader. In October 1922, the so-called March on Rome took place where the fascists seized power. Benito Mussolini officially established a fascist dictatorship in 1925 when he proclaimed himself dictator. Italy subsequently developed into a police state in which terror and exclusion of dissenters occurred widespread. Mussolini dreamed of the rebirth of a Roman empire and he wanted to avenge the Italian humiliation they suffered at the hands of the Abyssinians, the Ethiopians at the end of the previous century. In the mid 30s, Italy invaded Abyssinia again and this time they proclaimed victory. In the summer of 1936, the Spanish Civil War broke out, which was a conflict between nationalists and republicans. Mussolini supported the nationalist cause as he hoped that once the nationalists would achieve victory, Spain would become an Italian client state. The nationalists did proclaim victory, but Spain never became a vassal state of Italy. On paper, Italy had a large army. When Italy entered the Second World War with its declaration of war to the Allies on the 10th of June 1940, invading France, when the German invasion of France was already well on its way, Italy's army would count for 1 million 630,000 men and later would rise to a number of around 2.5 million men. Before the outbreak of World War II, the Italian military had seen action in Ethiopia, Spain and Albania. After Italy entered the Second World War, it would find its fronts in different parts of Europe, Greece, Yugoslavia and the USSR. They also fought in North Africa. But all these battlefields were too much for Italy's resources. The Italian army in the Second World War performed very poorly and only achieved success due to German support. Mostly, there are some exceptions here and there. Mid-May 1943, the North African campaign was lost and a few months later, the Allies landed on Sicily. Also, Rome was bombed. The morale of the Italian civilians was at an all-time low as John Pollard puts it. Three years of virtually continuous military defeats, the failure of the regime to organize the home front properly, including inadequate air raid precautions, serious food shortages, and the bombing of Italian cities had all taken their toll. For nearly eight years since the Italian invasion of Abyssinia, Italy was at war. Factories in the north of the country were plagued by strikes in March and May 1943, which largely went unpunished as the fascist unions nor the Italian police could do anything. And this proved that the regime was not only ineffective in military affairs, but also in establishing an effective totalitarian state. Yes, Italy was on paper a totalitarian state, However, if you compare it with Nazi Germany, that state was way more effective in its totalitarianism. The Italian industrialists, for example, they were not all on board with Mussolini's fascism 
and by 1943 they had lost faith in the ideology and its leaders. An important factor in their alienation was the almost total German takeover and economic penetration of the Balkans, which resulted in the loss of Italian markets. The Italian king was looking for a way to end the war for his people and country. Mussolini needed to go. Also, the Vatican supported this idea. The king, however, was too timid to stand up against Mussolini. Anti-fascist groups were too disorganized and many of them were also abroad. So they were not able to harness support against the regime and overthrow it. The only faction that could overthrow Mussolini was the fascist party itself. His members were also very war wary. All the existing evidence suggests that these groups must have been as demoralized and disillusioned as the rest of the population and that their continued loyalty and obedience to the regime was now largely a matter of conformism and habit. At the top of the party hierarchy, bitter resentment against the Germans and a total disillusionment with the Duce's military leadership were the dominant sentiments. In January 1943, Mussolini had already reshuffled his cabinet, sacking some prominent members, among which Gagliezzo Ciano. Um, but these people who were sacked now became opposition members, which basically strengthened the opposition to Mussolini. At the end of July, a group of leading fascists, among which Ciano, came together and were convinced that the only way to save Italy was to put Mussolini from power. The overthrow of Mussolini was essentially a palace revolution where initiative from the ordinary Italian civilians did not play any role. However, anti-fascist forces did exist in Italy since the beginning of Mussolini's reign. They contributed next to nothing to Mussolini's downfall. The prime mover was Dino Grandi, Minister of Justice, who requested a meeting of the Grand Council on the 9th and the 24th of July. A vote of no confidence was proposed where Mussolini had to hand over his powers to the king. Grandi's motion attracted a substantial majority of the vote. Mussolini was then arrested. The next day, the king appointed a new cabinet with Italian Marshal Badoglio as prime minister. The new government abolished most of the institutions of the fascist regime. The total failure of the regime at any level to offer even a minimum of resistance demonstrates the extent to which fascism had crumbled from within, eaten away by corruption, cynicism, disillusionment and despair. A popular rejoicing occurred and images and symbols of the regime were ceremonially destroyed in the streets of Italy. These events show that the fascist regime was dependent on various components and when these fell away, the regime was destined to go. This did not mean the end of the war of Italy. It also didn't mean the end of the Italo-German Pact of Steel, as Badoglio reassured the Germans that Italy would remain at the side of Germany to fight against the Allies. However, secretly he was negotiating with the Allies and they came to an agreement on the 8th of September. However, as feared, the Germans stepped in and executed a contingency plan prepared by Hitler's generals. Germans took over Italy. On September 12, 1943, they also liberated Mussolini and Hitler tried to bring Mussolini back into a position of power in Italy. Mussolini proclaimed the Italian Social Republic. However, real power lay with Nazi Germany and Mussolini no longer actually ruled. Meanwhile, the Allies advanced across the Italian peninsula. On the 28th of April 1945, Mussolini, alongside with his mistress, was executed near Lake Como by Italian partisans, after which the bodies were put on display in Milan to an angry mob. The Allies were now in the middle of Italy. Thanks to my patrons, you see their names on the screen right now. And a special thanks to Thomas Zabiega, Damien Wallace, Connor, Philip Jordan, Marcus Kaas, Nick Terranova, Haley, Mark Little Hale, Janusz Jorzenkiewicz, Joan, Jester Tabel, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, Andrea Martic, Susanna Di Bella, John Beach, Fabrizio, Way Back History, Fernando Lopez Ojeda, Luis Pichera, and Mike West. If you want to learn about the Italian army till 1943, you can click right here. I also have a video about 
how Germany and Italy became allies and formed the Axis powers. You can find a video on that right here. I want to thank you for watching. Consider of supporting me via Patreon or PayPal. Links are in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and arrivederci.